Have I got an epic one for you today? We have a dock not reaching temperature, which is never a good thing, as it's not replaceable and you need to be a millionaire to afford to change the whole exhaust. If you don't know what a dock is, you could educate yourself with a good workshop manual, such as this fine example that I'm currently working on, that will be available soon in PDF and a printed hard copy. Anyway, there's a few tests we can carry out on this vehicle to identify what could be causing this fault, so let's get into it. For a start, it could be that the temperature sensor is causing a misreading and telling the EAS ECU false information, so we're best setting up some monitoring tests to identify the temperature. We can then check the sensors and check that the readings are consistent. As you can see, they're all about the same temp. Seeing as I just brought this vehicle into the workshop, I'm happy with that. We best get this cab over on this XF and do a bit more investigation as to what else could be causing this fault. With the cab safely over, we can start checking all the exhaust system for leaks, which I usually see in the downpipe. Seeing as all this looks fine, it's back to the drawing board. We're going to move this vehicle outside for the next step of this diagnosis and carry out a force regeneration. With this controlled regeneration cycle, we can monitor specific system data from the EAS ECU and check it for correct temperature and quantity. The driver has reported constant regeneration while driving and masses of white smoke at low speeds during regeneration, which would be typical symptoms of a poorly performing dock. With our regeneration started, we can verify the customer's concerns and confirm what he said to be true. Now we just need to identify where this process is going wrong. Starting with our fuel shutoff valve, this is now open and injecting fuel into the exhaust to chemically react with the dock's precious metals and increase the temperature so the DPF can burn off the soot that has been collected. The bottom left is the exhaust gas temperature entering the system before the dock and the reading to the right is the exhaust gas temperature after the dock where it has been superheated. Here we can monitor the process and identify where to go next. As the ES system continues its regeneration, this temperature after the dock doesn't increase to what it should be at 550 degrees centigrade. So we can safely say we need to do some more testing this time, specifically on the dock and its performance. Firstly, we need to initiate a mobile regeneration trigger so the truck can regenerate while we're driving and then we're going to inhibit it on the dash till I'm ready to record the data on a road test and log it. With the truck coupled to a loaded trailer and me riding shotgun to monitor the temperatures as this test relies on the temperature before dock being kept consistent we can head out onto the motorway where it's flat and we can start a mobile regeneration and record the data. This test is done twice over five minutes where the temps will rise in the exhaust and meet the system requirements that the EAS ECU wants to see. With the test complete, we can open the recording and display it as a graph to make the results more tangible. This is a good example here the light blue line going straight up is where we turn on the mobile regeneration and the blue line across the middle is the target temperature the DPF needs to reach. The dark blue line that rises up rather fast to meet it is the DPF temperature. This is our recording from our road test. This squiggly line across the graph is our DPF temperature and it needs to reach that solid middle line which is the target temperature. 
Again, the vertical lines represent me turning the mobile regeneration on, and as you can see, that squiggly line across the graph never does manage to reach the target temperature, meaning this dock is unserviceable and we will have to replace the whole exhaust system. I hope this has helped provide you with some insight into how important temperatures are in the regeneration process and how technical our jobs can get. We as technicians are required to do more and more technical diagnosis and without the correct information or even understanding the system you're trying to diagnose, how can you ever hope to achieve this? Check out this video here where no diagnosis is required as we pull the exhaust and you get to see what DAFs apply as a replacement to rectify this fault.